Let's begin our journey to understand the development of the atomic structure from a historical point of view. See, this Democritus is a Greek philosopher. He proposed and he, he proposed a theory. He says that if this gold atom or gold repeatedly divided, if it is repeatedly divided, there comes a point where the smallest particle, which is indivisible anymore, meaning it cannot be divided anymore, can be achieved. Okay? A state where the particle becomes indivisible. Alright? So they call this atomos. Just imagine I cut this into very fine pieces all the time, thousands and millions of times and you reach a state where it cannot be divided anymore. Atomos means indivisible in Greek. All right, so he proposed that. So in 1808, a scientist, John Dalton, he proposed a, an atomic theory. So the atomic theory, he proposed that all elements are made up of indivisible particles called atoms okay so again he used the same concept indivisible and he called it atoms each type of element can be divided until you cannot be divided anymore all right so he called this the smallest particle atoms all right so b another uh, another theory is he says that atoms are not created neither created not destroyed. So you can't really create atom, you cannot destroy atom. This is what he proposed. Right? Then the third thing he proposed is atoms of the same element are alike. Atoms of the same element. If the element is hydrogen, then all the atoms will be hydrogen. They are alike in their physical and chemical characteristics. Example, if this metal copper all right, so inside you have a lot of copper atoms. So this is the element of copper. All right, so element of copper. And each of them is a copper atom. The symbol for copper is Cu. All right, so an another theory is he proposed that when atoms combine, they combine in simple ratio. Combine in simple ratio okay so example if they combine 3 and 6 it will be 3 and 6 you, you won't see a situation like uh, 3.5 or, or, or 7.1 okay you won't see that they will combine in simplest ratio all right so all chemical reaction the last one he proposed that all chemical reaction results from combination or separation. All right. So compound is the combination of different elements. All right. So chemical reactions occur because of the combination or separation. So that's the another theory that he proposed. Whether it is combination or separation, that makes a chemical reaction. Right? Chem chemical reaction occurs because of combination or separation and when they combine, they combine in simple ratio. Then, what is the weakness of John Dalton's atomic theory? Because he mentioned that atom is the smallest, there's no more, no more beyond that. But actually, you can investigate this further, atom can be even we investigate and you find out that a lot of uh, subatomic particles are within the atom. So these subatomic particles are protons, neutrons, and electrons. But at that time, uh, no one has discovered all these things yet. All right. So it's so this is much discovered much later. Proton, neutron, and electron. All right. So the truth is there are subatomic particles in an atom. The second thing he mentioned that uh, atoms cannot be destroyed. 
cannot be destroyed or created. Actually, artificially, we can create atoms. Okay? This process is called transmutation. Transmutation is a process where atoms are created. Okay? You learn that in a high-level chemistry. Atoms are created artificially. All right? It can also decompose, meaning it can be destroyed. Because some of the elements, they are not stable. When they decompose, they emit some radiation. So they can be destroyed and they can transform into something else. A new atom can be created. And the third thing that he mentioned that all atoms are alike. All right? So all atoms are alike, but not really because some substance is a combination of different isotopes in different percentage. When we say isotope, before we understand the term isotope, we want to know that, let's say we discovered hydrogen. And early scientists, they, when they discovered hydrogen, they realized that it comes in three different forms. Okay, you have hydrogen 1, you have hydrogen 2, and hydrogen 3. So this is called a proteum. This is called a deuterium. And the third one is called a tritium. They exist in different per percentage. Of course, this one, proteum, exists in most percentage. Uh, I'm just quoting example, could be around 98%, and this one is 1%, and this one is less than 1%. Alright, so they are of the same element, but they are not really alike in their characteristics. So this is the basis of isotope. So you might find in a sample you have H1, you have H2, you have H3, all together in the same sample. Okay? So this is not what John Dalton has uh, predicted. Okay? It's his uh, model is a bit not accurate because he proposed that all atoms are alike, but actually they are not. They are of the same element, but they are not alike. They are different in certain characteristics. So, when we move on along the journey, in 1897, J.J. Thomson has discovered, discovered negatively charged particle, meaning he discovered electron. So this electron is negatively charged. Alright? Negatively charged. So he called it electron, and he suggests that the model of atoms should be like a chip small uh, biscuit. Of course, chip small biscuit is what I quote. Is they don't really call it chip small, but this looks a bit like chip small because it's like the electron are distributed on the surface of a plum pudding. Okay, they call this a plum pudding model. The electrons are on top of the pudding and this pudding is uh, positively charged and the uh, chips are actually negatively charged electrons so this is his model JJ Thompson okay positively charged sphere this is a positively charged sphere alright